What's up, deep thinkers? It's Robert from Existence First. And what I want to talk to you about today is this article I just read called The Dark Side of Going for Gold. After the Olympics, both winners and losers are prone to emotional crashes. Okay, so there's this phenomenon where athletes will go to the Olympics and whether they win or they lose, both parties have a tendency or a, you could say, vulnerability to become depressed afterwards. Now, let's figure this out. Let's dissect this. Let's get deep, dig deep into it because remember this is existence first, self-help for deep thinkers. We don't solve superficial problems here. We solve deep problems. So, first step, let's kind of take a look at how this is even being framed and let's delineate that transition from fact to uh, interpretation. Here's the fact. The athletes, whether they win or lose, they return and I guess more often than we would expect, they feel depressed. Boom, there's the fact. Now, are we going to interpret this one way or the other way? That's called the frame. Okay, so there's a frame in the whole article that came from the, uh, the Atlantic. So if you need to read it yourself, just Google that title I, I said. So whenever, they, whenever a party is going to talk about something, they're going to put a spin or a frame on it. So, the frame, at least the way that I read the article, was I got this sense that, like, they weren't happy. The author was kind of reporting this as an unpleasant finding. And that's one way to look at it. It's one way. Yeah, that's one way. You can say... Uh, you can say, geez, all these, they win the gold medal, they come back and they're depressed, like, you know, see this as a big problem. I don't know. Before we impose that frame on it, why don't we just treat it as a fact first and say, hmm, what can we learn here about the human being? What can we learn about our nature? So, if we take that approach we're going to look at it a little bit differently, all right? So you've got these athletes, they return home, and they get a little depressed. So what what are, what are can we learn from that, okay? One thing for sure, and it's something that I see all the time, is that human beings need activity. Um, there's a book called Flow that I was laughing because the author's name is just, it's really pronounced Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, but... Uh, if you just Google flow psychology, you'll, you'll find the guy. Um, but he wrote a really good book on uh, what he calls flow state. is when somebody is uh, working on a task which has a difficulty level that's a good match for their abilities. And you can, I mean, think about this. When you lose yourself in making a painting or like... Uh, or a, maybe playing a computer game or something like you just and just hours past like minutes right but you're in flow state like you're sometimes in sports maybe but the point is you've got this your, your mind is kind of organized okay so that's one way to explain it here's another way to explain it i did a video called um what was the one i fil filmed in vegas uh i think it's called how to escape a period of darkness or something but the point I made in that video was that movies and books have a common structure, a plot line, which is, um, uh, which is like the, the events leading up to the climax, and then there's a resolution. And I made the comparison of that curve to the fight or flight response. Some tension building up, building up, building up to the final climax or fight fight or flight moment, then there's a resolution, you escape the predator, and, uh, and you can relax, right? This is a story of, a story of our life as, as uh, evolved mammals, right? Now, how about if we look at this Olympic phenomenon the same way, that there's all of this tension building up, oh, it's, uh, you know, two years away, one year away, six months away, and then finally, oh, I'm at the Olympics, I'm about to compete, like, and you're, you've trained for years for this, right? 
and then there's the final climax, the final moment where you actually compete. And then, boom, there's a dip for whatever reason, right? Whether it's emotionally or just not as much going on in your life, there's some sort of dip. But look at the structure and the similarity of this, okay? So, is that a problem? Is that something to like go up in arms about? Like, oh man, it's like, you know, human beings, we can't, we just can't win the, you know, even gold medalists still get depressed. Like, no, I refuse to think about the human being in that way. That is a victim approach and it's negative and pessimistic. So, how do we think about this? Well, Stephen Covey, author of Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, has a phrase that goes, live your life in crescendo. What does that mean? Crescendo is when music goes, starts building, 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 right? You're excited, you're excited. So the athlete's life is in crescendo all of the way up to their performance in the Olympics. After that point, it goes down and it's no longer in crescendo. So what's the solution? Why don't you just keep your life in crescendo, okay? You go compete at the Olympics, whether you win or you lose, okay, now go on to your next your next goal, your next uh, your next idea, right? And just keep fl staying in flow state, staying in crescendo. Once you accomplish one thing, go accomplish another. Um, there's a good uh, quote by Tony Robbins that has some. That says something to the effect of, "Never leave a site of great progress without planning your next um, accomplishment." So that way, you stay in crescendo. Okay, so. Look at this. We took an article that could be used as evidence or ammunition by pessimists uh, to further prove that human nature is negative. And we s turn that around. We use that to educate ourselves about the human race, about human nature. And this is how we are to live. Okay? This is how we live. We create our existence. We learn we learn about life, what we are as a human being, but then we take that knowledge and we, we choose if we want to go path A, path B, path C, whatever. Okay, That's how you put your existence first.